Mold, Wikipedia article audio. A mold or mold is a fungus that grows in the form of multicellular filaments called hyphae. In contrast, fungi that can adopt a single-celled growth habit are called yeasts. Biology Common molds Food production Pharmaceuticals from molds Health effects Growth in buildings and homes Use in art Molds are a large and taxonomically diverse number of fungal species in which the growth of hyphae results in discoloration and a fuzzy appearance, especially on food. The network of these tubular branching hyphae, called a mycelium, is considered a single organism. The hyphae are generally transparent, so the mycelium appears like very fine, fluffy white threads over the surface. Cross walls may delimit connected compartments along the hyphae, each containing one or multiple, genetically identical nuclei. The dusty texture of many molds is caused by profuse production of asexual spores formed by differentiation at the ends of hyphae. The mode of formation and shape of these spores is traditionally used to classify molds. Many of these spores are colored, making the fungus much more obvious to the human eye at this stage in its life cycle. Molds are considered to be microbes and do not form a specific taxonomic or phylogenetic grouping, but can be found in the divisions Zygomycota and Ascomycota. In the past, most molds were classified within the Deuteromycota. Molds cause biodegradation of natural materials, which can be unwanted when it becomes food spoilage or damage to property. They also play important roles in biotechnology and food science in the production of various foods, beverages, antibiotics, pharmaceuticals, and enzymes. Some diseases of animals and humans can be caused by certain molds, disease may result from allergic sensitivity to mold spores, from growth of pathogenic molds within the body or from the effects of ingested or inhaled toxic compounds produced by molds. There are thousands of known species of molds, which have diverse lifestyles including saprotrophs, mesophiles, psychrophiles, and thermophiles and a very few opportunistic pathogens of humans. They all require moisture for growth and some live in aquatic environments. Like all fungi, Molds derive energy not through photosynthesis but from the organic matter on which they live, utilizing heterotrophy. Typically, molds secrete hydrolytic enzymes, mainly from the hyphal tips. These enzymes degrade complex biopolymers such as starch, cellulose, and lignin into simpler substances which can be absorbed by the hyphae. In this way molds play a major role in causing decomposition of organic material, enabling the recycling of nutrients throughout ecosystems. Many molds also synthesize mycotoxins and sidrophores which, together with lytic enzymes, inhibit the growth of competing microorganisms. Molds can also grow on stored food for animals and humans making the food unpalatable or toxic and are thus a major source of food losses and illness. Many strategies for food preservation are to prevent or slow mold growth as well as growth of other microbes. Molds reproduce by producing large numbers of small spores, which may contain a single nucleus or be multinucleate. Mold spores can be asexual or sexual, Many species can produce both types. Some molds produce small, hydrophobic spores that are adapted for wind dispersal and may remain airborne for long periods, in some the cell walls are darkly pigmented, providing resistance to damage by ultraviolet radiation. Other mold spores have slimy sheaths and are more suited to water dispersal. Mold spores are often spherical or ovoid single cells, 
but can be multicellular and variously shaped. Spores may cling to clothing or fur, some are able to survive extremes of temperature and pressure. Although molds can grow on dead organic matter everywhere in nature, their presence is visible to the unaided eye only when they form large colonies. A mold colony does not consist of discrete organisms but is an interconnected network of hyphae called a mycelium. All growth occurs at hyphal tips, with cytoplasm and organelles flowing forwards as the hyphae advance over or through new food sources. Nutrients are absorbed at the hyphal tip. In artificial environments such as buildings, humidity and temperature are often stable enough to foster the growth of mold colonies, commonly seen as a downy or furry coating growing on food or other surfaces. Few molds can begin growing at temperatures of 4 degrees Celsius or below, so food is typically refrigerated at this temperature. When conditions do not enable growth to take place, molds may remain alive in a dormant state depending on the species, within a large range of temperatures. The many different mold species vary enormously in their tolerance to temperature and humidity extremes. Certain molds can survive harsh conditions such as the snow-covered soils of Antarctica, refrigeration, highly acidic solvents, antibacterial soap, and even petroleum products such as jet fuel. 22. Xerophilic molds are able to grow in relatively dry, salty, or sugary environments, where water activity is less than 0.85 other molds need more moisture. Common genera of molds include The KG molds are a group of Aspergillus species, notably Aspergillus oryzae, and secondarily A. soji, that have been cultured in Eastern Asia for many centuries. They are used to ferment a soybean and wheat mixture to make soybean paste and soy sauce. Koji molds break down the starch in rice, barley, sweet potatoes, etc., a process called saccharification, in the production of sake, SHCH and other distilled spirits. Koji molds are also used in the preparation of katsuobushi. Red rice yeast is a product of the mold Monascus purpureus grown on rice, and is common in Asian diets. The yeast contains several compounds collectively known as monocolons, which are known to inhibit cholesterol synthesis. A study has shown that red rice yeast used as a dietary supplement, combined with fish oil and healthy lifestyle changes, may help reduce bad cholesterol as effectively as certain commercial statin drugs. Some sausages, such as salami, incorporate starter cultures of molds to improve flavor and reduce bacterial spoilage during curing. Penicillium naljovens, for example, may appear as a powdery white coating on some varieties of dry cured sausage. Other molds that have been used in food production include Alexander Fleming S. Accidental discovery of the antibiotic penicillin involved a penicillium mold called Penicillium notatum. Fleming continued to investigate penicillin, showing that it could inhibit various types of bacteria found in infections and other ailments, but he was unable to produce the compound in large enough amounts necessary for production of a medicine. His work was expanded by a team at Oxford University, Clutterbuck, Lovell and Rice Trick, who began to work on the problem in 1931. This team was also unable to produce the pure compound in any large amount, and found that the purification process diminished its effectiveness and negated the antibacterial properties it had. Howard Florey, Ernst Chain Norman Heatley, Edward Abraham, also all at Oxford, continued the work. They enhanced and developed the concentration technique by using organic solutions rather than water, 
and created the Oxford unit to measure penicillin concentration within a solution. They managed to purify the solution, increasing its concentration by 4550 times, but found that a higher concentration was possible. Experiments were conducted and the results published in 1941, though the quantities of penicillin produced were not always high enough for the treatments required. As this was during the Second World War, Flory sought USA government involvement. With research teams in the UK and some in the US, industrial-scale production of crystallized penicillin was developed during 1941-1944 by the USDA and by Pfizer. Several statin cholesterol-lowering drugs are derived from molds. The immunosuppressant drug cyclosporin, used to suppress the rejection of transplanted organs, is derived from the mold Tolipoclidium inflatum. Molds are ubiquitous, and mold spores are a common component of household and workplace dust, however, when mold spores are present in large quantities, they can present a health hazard to humans, potentially causing allergic reactions and respiratory problems. Some molds also produce mycotoxins that can pose serious health risks to humans and animals. Some studies claim that exposure to high levels of mycotoxins can lead to neurological problems and in some cases, death. Prolonged exposure, e.g. daily home exposure, may be particularly harmful. Research on the health impacts of mold has not been conclusive. The term toxic mold refers to molds that produce mycotoxins, such as Stachybotrys chartarum, and not to all molds in general. Mold in the home can usually be found in damp, dark or steamy areas e.g. bathroom or kitchen, cluttered storage areas, recently flooded areas, basement areas, plumbing spaces, areas with poor ventilation and outdoors in humid environments. Symptoms caused by mold allergy are watery, itchy eyes, a chronic cough, headaches or migraines, difficulty breathing, rashes, tiredness, sinus problems, nasal blockage and frequent sneezing. Molds can also pose a hazard to human and animal health when they are consumed following the growth of certain mold species in stored food. Some species produce toxic secondary metabolites, collectively termed mycotoxins including aflatoxins, ochratoxins, fuminescins, trichothecins, citrinin, and patulin. These toxic properties may be used for the benefit of humans when the toxicity is directed against other organisms, for example, penicillin adversely affects the growth of gram-positive bacteria, certain spirochetes, and certain fungi. Mold growth in buildings can lead to a variety of health problems as microscopic airborne reproductive spores, analogous to tree pollen are inhaled by building occupants. High quantities of indoor airborne spores as compared to exterior conditions are strongly suggestive of indoor mold growth. Determination of airborne spore counts is accomplished by way of an air sample, in which a specialized pump with a no flow rate is operated for a known period of time. Conducive to scientific methodology air samples should be drawn from the affected area, a control area, and the exterior. The air sampler pump draws in air and deposits microscopic airborne particles on a culture medium. The medium is cultured in a laboratory and the fungal genus and species are determined by visual microscopic observation. Laboratory results also quantify fungal growth by way of a spore count for comparison among samples. The pump operation time was recorded and when multiplied by the operation time results in a specific volume of air obtained. Although a small volume of air is actually analyzed, 
common laboratory reporting techniques extrapolate the spore count data to equate the amount of spores that would be present in a cubic meter of air. Various practices can be followed to mitigate mold issues in buildings, the most important of which is to reduce moisture levels that can facilitate mold growth. Properly functioning air conditioning units are essential to controlling levels of indoor airborne fungal spores. Air filtration reduces the number of spores available for germination, especially when a high-efficiency particulate air filter is used. A properly functioning AC unit also reduces the relative humidity, or the moisture inherent in the air. The United States Environmental Protection Agency currently recommends that relative humidity be maintained between 30% to 50% to preempt mold growth. Considering that fungal growth requires cellulose, plant fiber, as a food source, using building materials that do not contain cellulose is an effective method of preventing fungal growth. Eliminating the moisture source is the first step at fungal remediation. Removal of affected materials may also be necessary for remediation, if materials are easily replaceable and not part of the load-bearing structure. Professional drying of concealed wall cavities and enclosed spaces such as cabinet toa kick spaces may be required. Post-remediation verification of moisture content and fungal growth is required for successful remediation. Many contractors perform post-remediation verification themselves, but property owners may benefit from independent verification. Various artists have used mold in various artistic fashions. Daniel Del Nero, for example, constructs scale models of houses and office buildings and then induces mold to grow on them, giving them an unsettling, reclaimed-by-nature look. Stacy Levy sandblasts enlarged images of mold onto glass, then allows mold to grow in the crevasses she has made, creating a macro-micro portrait. Sam Taylor Johnson has made a number of time-lapse films capturing the gradual decay of classically arranged still lives. Fusarium venenatum corn, Geotrichum candidum cheese, Neurospora citophila oncom, Penicillium spp. Various cheeses including brie and blue cheese, Ritzomucor mihe microbial rennet for making vegetarian and other cheeses, Rhizopus oligosporus tempe, Rhizopus orizi tempe, Jiuquifer juniang or precursor for making Chinese rice wine.